English Network. He frequently lectures throughout the world on political science, public choice, civil society, and the moral, legal, and historical foundations of individual rights. He is also the author of many books and countless reviews and articles on politics and morality. Please welcome Dr. Tom Palmer. Thank you so much. And all of the regional liberty forums that we do, the uh, uh, <clears throat> Liberty Award is one of the real highlights. We have three finalists. Each one will be presenting their organization and their project. I'd like to begin by calling to the stage Mr. Khalid Ramizi of the Afghanistan Economic and Legal Studies Organization. Where is he? Okay. Silk Road Online Radio. Rights, respect, responsibility. Silk Road Online Radio. If you want to know about scientific, legal, economic, social, and sports matters, be with Silk Road Online Radio. Hello, everyone. Hi. So, Hello. I am the luckiest one that I came two times in a day to the stage of Asia Liberty Forum. Uh, so, there are many great works that we are doing in Afghanistan, but one of our projects that we are running is Silk Road Station, or Silk Road Station Radio, a station or radio programs. We are also producing radio and TV programs in Afghanistan for promotion of liberty, peace, and prosperity in the country. Uh, so, to begin with, at first I would like to uh, start with a short history of the Silk uh, Station and how we established this station. Uh, uh, a research that, uh, uh, that did my organization on 2010, we found it out that the best and the easiest way in Afghanistan to reach the community and to reach the people and to educate them the libertarian ideas as producing of uh, radio and video programs. Because ha half of the country uh, uh, are illiterate and they don't know uh, writing and they, they, can, they cannot write and read. Uh, we decided to start our own initiatives on, two, uh, on 2011 uh, by producing of radio programs and on that time we only produced the radio programs uh, and our scholars talked regarding specific topics and after the recording of the programs we distribute these programs to the local FM radios and also to the digital radios of the country for its broadcasting and reaching our message to our audience, to our people. But finally on 2015 we came out with another sources, our organization became hold and our organization become wider in the country, we decided to establish our own initiatives to, and to establish our own uh, radio station. To, we have also the ownership and we have also uh, 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 everything that we can do that. Unfortunately, we, uh, uh, it's working, we, uh, we can go forward. Yeah. Unfortunately, on 2015, we uh, inaugurated officially the Silk Road Station with the support of Atlas Network and also Network for a Free Society with the specific aim of Silk Road Station in Afghanistan is to promote liberty, is to educate every citizen of the country their basic rights and uh, 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 to bring positive change in Afghanistan people's lives. So, what are the specific goals and aims or the, or the programs of Silk Road Station in Afghanistan? The specific and the goal of Silk Road Station is to promote free society values in the country. Human rights, freedom of speech, good governance, and so on. Currently, the station has 39 radio programs. We have 39 radio programs and all the programs are in national languages of the country and also 20% of our programs are in English language, and we have a huge number of scholars with us. They are coming regularly to our station, and we are producing 
at, at, at educational radio programs. The other thing uh, uh, is uh, the other programs that we are producing is to change the traditional mentalities toward modernization in Afghanistan. And also, as Afghanistan is a traditional country, and you cannot do anything without the religion and also the traditional and the customs of the people, we are mostly focusing to, to tell the people the truth regarding compatibility of Islam with the free society values. Uh, and also, we are producing different programs to encourage uh, Afghanistan women uh, for their uh, participation on social, political, and other activities in the country. Uh, we are uh, producing many other awareness programs regarding the basic rights of the people to uh, which rights they have in a, as a human in the society. Uh, also, what we are producing many other programs uh, for, uh, 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 for Afghan families to how we can change their lives toward a prosperous life and toward a, in, a, in a positive way. Uh, also, as tolerance is really important in Afghanistan, and there are uh, uh, many groups who are working actively against toleration in the country, we are producing many programs with the aim of uh, uh, the promotion of tolerance and decline of extremism in the country. So the listeners are the beneficiaries of uh, Silk Road Station. Uh, uh, fortunately, in 2016, uh, as our online statistics shows, our message and our radio programs reached to more than 300,000 people around the world. And they listened to our radio programs, to our programs. And in 2017, we reached to more than 3,400,000 in all over the world. And as you see in here, that on 2017, 78% of our listeners was from uh, Asia, 13% was from Europe, and 9% we had listeners from America. So, what are the achievements, what we did, what we received? Uh, approximately, we, re we enhanced and we when we could to reach to our uh, uh, message, to our voice, voice of freedom, and our educational programs to more than 300,000 people across the country and outside of the country. The second thing is that, that we bring positive change in lives of families, especially in uh, uh, decrease of violence against women in families as we, ha we are producing many programs and we received many positive feedbacks from uh, our religious scholars, from other uh, policy makers in the countries that our programs affected on the lives of family, Afghan families to how they should uh, the, the behavior with their uh, lives, with their daughters, and so on. Uh, also, change in attitude uh, uh, of youths to how they should work, fight with extremism and work for a sustainable peace and prosperity in the country. Also, uh, uh, we could successfully uh, bring many reforms and in, in government policies. We have different programs. To, that made the government to change their policies, especially for private sector of the country. Uh, and finally, uh, uh, as we are the first station in Afghanistan that working for these values and for these uh, 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 ideas, we gave the idea to other uh, 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 media, especially, to they should work for toler tolerance, to they should work for promotion of all the free society values in the country. So, how you can listen to our programs? The easiest way, everybody can find us to App Store and Google Store. Just please go to App Store and Google Store and write Silk Road Station, and in Google Play, just, play, just please write Silk Road Station. You can find our application, and where you are, you can listen to our radio programs. And also, you can check our website in every part of the world. Recently, we also had some uh, things in Iran that the government of Iran uh, make blocked our IP, and uh, uh, that. So, uh, the final thing uh, 
as a special thanks to Atlas Network and also Network for a Free Society that they supported us to we establish this station. This station is not only belongs to the libertarian of Afghanistan, this station is belongs to all the think tanks who are working for freedom and peace in all over the country. Thank you so much. Thank you, Khalid. Our next presenter is Akash Shreshta of the Sam Reddy Foundation to present their Reform Circle project. Akash. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be presenting about our program called the Reform Circle. Um, so. Much like Samriddhi Foundation, we started the Reform Circle in 2011 uh, uh, to, you know, uh, coming out of major, you know, political shifts uh, and uh, movements in Nepal. Uh, we thought if people were not being able to, you know, derive tangible economic benefits out of, you know, democracy or, you know, these major political shifts that were happening in Nepal very frequently, almost one, once every decade. We thought, you know, we were heading to another major conflict, then leading into another major political shift. So we thought it was really important to create a platform where, or, or it was really important to ensure that the democracy was delivering and people were being able to, you know, uh, draw tangible economic benefits out of uh, the democracy. And we at somebody believed that these tangible economic outcomes could be uh, uh, made possible through uh, promoting markets and enabling entrepreneurship. But yes, that was our uh, part of the story. Uh, in Nepal, we uh, still lacked any major political party that uh, uh, believed in, completely believed in free market ideas. Economy had largely taken a backseat to politics, uh, you know, coming out of a major civil war between 1996 and 2006, there was a lot of, you know, political instability. Uh, amidst uh, the political instability, uh, political leaders were also focusing more and more on personal and party gains rather than economic growth of the country. So all in all, it was a difficult time for, you know, uh, difficult time to promote ideas of free market in, uh, in Nepal. And at one point, we were actually rather even scared that, you know, the liberal economic policies that had been adopted in the 1990s, early 1990s, during the liberalization era would backtrack to, you know, pre-liberalization era. So what we did was we put together uh, a group of you know, young politicians and business community leaders, and we created a common platform for them whereby they could you know, candidly discuss some of the major political and economic uh, issues uh, of Nepal. Uh, what we did here was we created for them a closed platform so that political parties and political actors from across all parties could sit together, trust each other, and discuss uh, openly, uh, you know, their issues and their uh, solutions. And, you know, the business community could also, you know, uh, partake in this process. Uh, so, uh, Samriddhi brought together, while, while bringing in the political leaders, we uh, made sure that we were bringing in the second tier political leaders uh, and using these second tier political leaders also lent us, you know, put us at a strategic position uh, and we could, we could through them directly, uh, you know, also play a small role in the major political decision makings uh, in the country. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this is about how the reform circle works. Here in the reform circle, our approach is, you know, more of a multi-party, multi-sector alliance building rather than, you know, taking uh, um, uh, or building alliance, forging alliance with one like-minded one or a few like-minded organizations and then, you know, a lobbying for reform when they are in power. Uh, what we think a multi-party and multi-sector alliance has enabled uh, or, or made possible for us is to ensure that uh, the reform agendas that the reform circle picks are common agendas of all parties engaged and uh, become priority issues of all parties no matter who is in power. Uh, Again, closed forum on economic growth, this was really important, especially considering the sensitivity of the issues and, you know, uh, the political instability and everything. We needed to make sure that, you know, uh, uh, people, uh, whatever ideas people were discussing were not going out or, or, you know, create that space for candid discussion. That is also one of the reasons, by the way, uh, why you will not see any of the, you know, 
uh, discussions or any the, the reform circle in action during this entire presentation. We do, we do not uh, we don't take pictures. We don't do media mentions. We don't do media covers of uh, the reform circle in action. This uh, circle also provides us uh, a platform to uh, engage parliamentarians and other leaders in uh, pro-market ideas. Somebody makes it a point that we are doing presentations of, uh, of our findings, dissemination of our findings during these reform uh, circle meets. Uh, and uh, yeah, at this point, uh, 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 I should also mention that you know a lot of political parties nowadays, or especially political leaders nowadays, are also you know approaching us uh, with requests of you know giving them talking pointers or writing pointers every time they get a say three minute or five minute slot to speak in the parliament the next day, or if they have to appear on TV or write a piece on the newspaper. Uh, so yeah, uh, it it then allows us to you know feed our you know free market recommendations to these parliamentarians, which then later become their opinions and their commitments. Um, yeah, at this point, I'm also tempted to bring in uh, 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 a nice example of when we had Dr. Adam, uh, Dr. Eamon Butler from the Adam Smith Institute uh, uh, with us uh, a couple of years ago in Nepal. So we had him engage with the, uh, the representatives of the Reform Circle and also later in a different platform with the representatives of Ministry of Industry and Department of Industry. So we put him together with these representatives. And he went on and said something like, you guys should all have to spend at least one year trying to establish a business in Nepal before you are allowed to take your positions at your respective you know, departments or industries so that you know the nuances of your stupid enterprise laws. Well, uh, we could never do that ourselves. You know, we could never say that ourselves. But uh, you know, the fact that at this forum, we also make it a point to invite, to the extent possible, liberty champions from networks such as the Atlas Network or the Economic Freedom Network and, you know, have them engage with uh, our uh, uh, political leaders and business community leaders. Uh, you know, gives us, lends us that additional ear, or, or lends us the ear of the government in, in a much more, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, serious way than than they, they would, you know, uh, listen to a small uh, think tank or a group of people, you know, uh, giving them uh, uh, different opinions or ideas. Um, so yeah, I'll come back to that in a while, but that, that uh, little uh, you know, engagement with uh, Dr. Eamon Butler did, after a year, lead to a major enterprise law win for us. Um, at this point, yeah, we should also uh, mention we focus on marginal changes in, uh, during these reform circle meets and do not try to you know, engage in very you know, uh, heavy discussions that require the entire political community or the you know, government itself to come in and sit for a major uh, act reform. So we try to focus on smaller things that can be done. Uh, so how the reform circle aids policymakers is every time uh, you know uh, some of the members, the political members of the reform circle, uh, are nominated to uh, a government position, say uh, become a minister or are offered membership in a parliamentary committee, they made a point that they call for a meeting and. Uh, invite all other members to you know share ideas which allows them to forge a common you know agenda for growth going forward uh, another is like we've already uh, mentioned we do you know dissemination of our findings and also provide knowledge support to different parliamentarians and also business leaders uh, one of the important things this group does and as a group as a Nepali group a group of you know capable influential uh, young people is also you know take leadership at times uh, of crisis, for example, in the year 2015, when uh, you know after a series of massive earthquakes that hit uh, Nepal, this group was one of the first groups to come out and you know host a two-day conference uh, called Ideas for Rebuilding Nepal. We we uh, that was a you know marketplace of ideas where we engaged more than 2,000 participants, 2,000 uh, people from you know across all economic sectors came in and lent their inputs. Uh, into how the rebuilding process could be taken forward. It also engaged discussions on uh, policy ideas that would enable more private sector investments and create better opportunities, more opportunities for growth. Uh, so some of the wins uh, we've achieved through the Reform Circle initiative over the last uh, seven years now is we've built very strong networks with some of the key decision makers uh, in the country. Uh, at this point, even the prime minister would be two uh, phone calls away from uh, some the foundation so that's that's the that's the uh, that's a network that this reform circle has uh, given 
the Samradhi Foundation. Uh, like I mentioned, the legal reform. So the Minister of Industry, who was then uh, the then Minister of Industry when uh, Dr. Eamon Butler engaged with uh, our Reform Circle, was also you know uh, a member of the Reform Circle, and he issued a directive to the Ministry of to the Department of Industry rather, uh, which ensured that businesses, firms should be registered within 30 hours of having filed an application. So 10 a.m. in the morning, I file an application. 4 p.m. the next day, my uh, industry is registered, at least at the Department of Industry. Similarly, in, in the Company Act reform process as well, we were invited by the Parliamentary Committee in the series of discussions that led to the Act reform, which ensured that you know, companies would, uh, would be incorporated within seven days in Nepal. Uh, also, we've been invited uh, by the government's uh, uh, budget planning uh, committee where we've uh, been invited into the closed camps and we've worked with them to you know uh, work out the budgets where some of our recommendations have translated into the commitments of the government and I think more importantly in a society that is so uh, 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 driven by leftist uh, ideas I think this uh, gives for us a platform to discuss pragmatic market-based solutions uh, for prosperity, discuss some of the major political and economic problems of Nepal, and you know, discuss their solutions, solutions for prosperity. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Thank you, Akash. Our next presenter will be Mr. Casey Lartig, presenting the Global Economic Center of Teach North Korean Refugees. All right, good afternoon, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, we're really honored to be one of the finalists for the Asia Liberty Award. Uh, my name is Casey Lartig, I'm co-founder along with Ungu Lee, who's there taking a photo of me now. And the thing about us is that we are definitely civil society in action. We've had more than 1,000 people participate in our organization over the last four years. Uh, 336 refugees, 727 volunteers have participated. Empowered, the refugees come in and they get to choose their study path, they get to choose the teachers and coaches that they work with, they are in charge of our project. And the last thing is that it is truly grassroots funding, all of our money is raised by our volunteers and through the events that we organize. Now yesterday you got to hear from one of the ambassadors in our program, Unhi Park, and she joined our program. Um, and my, my speech would be more of a PS to what she said yesterday, because uh, there's so much that she could have said. She joined our program in April of 2015, and at that time, her English was at the level of, hi, nice to meet you. Uh, now, when she joined, she did not use her name. She hid her face, because at that time, she said she was embarrassed to be from North Korea. When we hold our sessions, we take a group photo. She even refused to be in the group photo because she didn't want to be identified as being from North Korea. She started getting comfortable with herself. She would come to us for counseling, talking about her future, and, but still she couldn't show her face uh, publicly. But as she started getting more comfortable, she decided she wanted to give a public speech. And she's the first student in our program who went from being a purely English study student to starting to give public speeches. So we weren't sure how to handle it, but she still did not want to show her face. But she started to blossom. And as she says that the volunteers and others who were helping her gave her confidence in herself so that she could finally say, as she did yesterday, that she is from North Korea. Uh, we are civil society, we rely completely on volunteers to make it happen, and as she says, it felt like a whole new world to her, because in North Korea, there's no such thing as civil society. Okay? She even participated in a speech contest, and she's now become a TV celebrity in South Korea, which she didn't mention yesterday. And we were on a TV show with her one time, so happy about that. <laughs> and so I wrote a column about her, and when I, when I sent her the version of it so she could see and check all the facts, she said, don't forget to mention my name is Unhee Park. 
Okay, so she went through this complete transformation. So that was the title of my column. Now we've had other refugees through our program who've also gone through transformations, and some of you may be familiar with Yummy Park. Uh, she gained international attention, actually October 2014, with a speech at One Young World. I was her coach to get her prepared to give that speech. Uh, she joined me when I worked at Freedom Factory. She was our media fellow. Uh, she became the ambassador, the first refugee ambassador of Teach North Korean Refugees, and we did a podcast together. And she has participated in Atlas Network and fellow events. So this was at the Shanghai Austrian Economic Summit. So this was like her first international speech. And we also had an event with the Atlas Network, the Atlas Network Experience in September 2014, in which we did a recording of the podcast that we've been doing together. And she's now an author of a book. She mentioned me twice, although I asked why only twice, you know, it could have been more than that. Um, but she's established herself internationally. Sherry Young is another refugee who joined our program, and she also started with Freedom Factory, where I used to work, used to be in the network, and TNKR as a student. And she also was able to go on a, on, on a trip to the USA, um, sponsored by the Atlas Network. So we went there in early 2015. You can see Stephanie and Brad there. And but she at first was not really that positive and confident about giving speeches, but she just, you know, really started to focus on it and she ended up winning our speech contest. We have two of them per year so that the refugees can work with their coaches. And in October, she gave a TEDx talk in the UK. And so you can go online, type Sherry Young and you can watch her talk about um, her escape from North Korea. We have others who come through our program, Sungju Lee, is the author of the book, Every Falling Star. He was the winner of our first speech contest that we had in February 2015. Eun Sun Kim is the author of a book, A Thousand Miles to Freedom, and she was the winner of our third speech contest. And we have others who, they just love what we're doing. They hear so much from refugees about how much of an impact we have on them. So Jan Jin Sung, who was the war, uh, psychological warfare officer for the North Korean regime. Uh, he's the author of the book, Dear Leader. He now joined our board of directors and he said, please just use my name whenever possible in any way that he, um, that he can help us. So as I said, we're a civil society. We make sure that the refugees are in control uh, at all times. They lead the program. And I want to finish with two testimonials. Uh, one of them is from the refugees in our program, and because in North Korea they're taught that Americans are evil, that they just like to kill for fun, um, but not only do the volunteers benefit, they learn from North Korean refugees, but also the refugees learn about the outside world, and they learn it in a way that they have people volunteering to help them. So she said, as I can hear from the giggles you've already read, uh, from TNKR I learned that not all Americans are assholes, and she says it's been a great experience, and so many of them say similar things um, about the benefit. And then I'll just finish with a quote from Uni Park. She says that TNKR gave her her name. So we're focused on refugees, we make sure that they're in control, and um, we try to build a community of support around them so that they can find their own way, as Uni did yesterday giving a speech to you. And Quickest way to find us on the internet is lovetnkr.com. Thank you very much. Well, that concludes our three presentations. There'll be a great deal of anticipation because the winner will be announced this evening at the gala dinner. So be sure to be there and on the edge of your seat uh, to learn who will be winning. And with this, I'll turn it back to our wonderful presenter, Anthea.